feels great to be back. Make sure you subscribe. And what the hell, click the bell so that way every time I upload something that you want to rage about, you'll be one of the first that can hit the comment section with your flaming keyboard fingers. Fire. Okay, okay, let's get going. Paul Heyman and Eric Bischoff are going to save the day. They're going to save Raw and SmackDown. Oh, give me a freaking break. I get it. Vince is going to start gravitating more towards XFL, especially as we get closer to 2020. Vince knows that they've been losing ground with the important 18 to 49 demographics. It hasn't been a good look for them. Viewership declining. You're getting ready to take SmackDown to Fox, which is free over-the-air network television in October, which is an entirely different monster of new possibilities right there. You need somebody you feel like you can trust, somebody with experience. So he turns to Paul Heyman and Eric Bischoff. By God, let's party like it's 2000 effing five. Except with different shows this time. And I know people are going to look at Bischoff and be like, oh, the charge of SmackDown, what good is that going to do? You can at least say he has familiarity with dealing with network executives to a level that Paul Heyman really doesn't. And for all the crap you can say about Bischoff, you know, there's something to be said about before WCW went down the crapper, he had WCW doing record business. Before Hogan and Bischoff really eventually ran TNA into the ground, there was a period of time where they were doing all-time great business for them. He has a track record and he has a history. He had a couple of years where he was a major influential creative voice within WWE. And shit, you guys wish you'd probably go back to those days of 2002 to 2005, don't you? And as far as Heyman goes, you're talking about reaching out to male demographics. Well, who better in wrestling is going to know that than Paul Heyman, right? 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 And ultimately, Vince trusts these guys. So from that standpoint, it makes sense. Knowing that the numbers haven't been good, it's been a continual slow decline, and no real signs of it turning around. So Vince knows he has to do something. And he did something. Well, Lottie frickin' da. Lottie frickin' da. Just because there's somebody else in charge of the creative doesn't change the number one problem. And that is Vince still oversees everything. You could have all the great ideas in the world, but if Vince isn't aligned, if Vince isn't down, it doesn't matter to hell of beans, and you all know this. And all of a sudden, you think it's going to be so significantly better here in 2019 with Paul Heyman booking Raw and Eric Bischoff in charge of SmackDown? Give me a fucking break. Like, even if you're going to sit there and point to this past week's Raw, and you're going to say, well, it felt better, and da 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 Well, a lot of things are better than vomit. Diarrhea is better than vomit, but how much better is it really? And even if you say, you presume the segments that Heyman had influence over. Braun and Bobby Lashley going through the set. The Maria and Mike Canella's pregnancy thing. So we're going to sit there and celebrate Heyman for doing something that the WWE has done with Braun Strowman similarly numerous times. To what fucking effect? But now all of a sudden because it's Heyman, we're going to sit there and pretend like it's so much more great and awesome than anything else they've done? Newsflash! Braun Strowman is withering and wasting away. You just did more of the same shit, you stupid idiots. And then as far as the whole crap, oh, a pregnancy angle. Oh, because that gives you such a fucking payoff. Give me a break. It sounds like Bischoff's not going to take over until after the pay-per-view, which to me feels like a good decision because why come into the middle of a shitstorm? Why not come into it when it's got a chance to reset itself a little bit. But again, this whole thing of Heyman and Bischoff are going to save the day. Especially Heyman. He knows that's what people are going to think. Oh, Heyman's going to save the day by God. Da, 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 da. What the fuck makes you think that? When's the last time that Heyman's been in charge of creative for a company? 14, 15 damn years ago? Just because he has his great name and you know him for this and know him for that doesn't mean that his ideas will resonate today. It's like this whole concept of you here putting a lipstick on a pig doesn't change the fact it's still a pig. Well, let me put it into ways that maybe some of the other people watching this might understand. You take a girl with no ass and you put great lingerie on her. It doesn't change the fact that she's got no fucking body whatsoever. 
flat as a board, light as a feather. You sitting there, you fucking Marcy Darcy, for God's sakes. No matter what quality of lingerie we got on her, it doesn't change that fact. Fun size, it means you're putting a new definition to the term boning if you get my fucking drift. Even if you want to sit there and buy into this bullshit, which I think is ridiculous, it doesn't deal with the fact that Vince is still ultimately going to be in charge and overseeing everything, so ain't shit going to really change. On top of all of that, who's to say that these guys, after so many years away from being major power players within WWE's creative structure, are going to do much that's going to be any different or any more successful? What makes you think that the overall creative infrastructure within WWE is at a similar level to what it was in the early and mid-2000s when you had better people behind the scenes. None of these things bear out to fucking be true. And again, it still comes down to Vince McMahon. So what the hell difference does it make? And again, what the hell makes you think that Heyman automatically is going to have all these great and awesome ideas? And I think when we get down to the nitty-gritty, the nuts and bolts of this, it is important to remember just how truly bad this shit has gotten. This is not something that you can fix in a month, three months, six months, or even a year. And you can sit there and fantasize about the company is now getting away from the PG rating and they're going to go more after the adult viewers. It doesn't matter what the rating is if the writing is shit. It doesn't matter what the rating is if the characters are poorly developed. It doesn't matter what the rating is if most of the shit has no purpose, meaning, or consequence for happening. It doesn't matter what the fuck the rating is if your stories are crap and lazy. And now you're asking Heyman to go out there and book his style of shit for a three-hour fucking show? Oh, that's destined for fucking success. Nah. Sure, you might see some initial increases and a little bit of a bump, but it's just going to be a temporary kind of placebo effect. It's not going to change the fact that this company has significant issues in terms of their talent roster, specifically how they have featured and not featured their talent roster. There is a whole infrastructure of bullshit within that company. Got to deal with Stephanie's bullshit, Triple H's bullshit, and then you got to deal with the old man Vincent Cayman. Man, bullshit. Ain't shit changing. And all of a sudden, going to fucking SmackDown on Fox, putting Bischoff in charge of it, ain't going to change shit either. Like, even if you sit there and say, well, Heyman turned AJ Styles' heel and realigned them with the club. Well, whoop the fucking do What the hell does it all mean? Oh, he's a really big fan of Ricochet. Look, the dude can do some incredible shit, but literally, what is so fucking different about him than 30 of the guys on the damn roster? I mean, seriously. What's the difference? I can go and watch an ROH or a New Japan or an AEW or an Impact Wrestling or whatever the fuck and see lots of guys like Ricochet. What the hell makes him so special and unique? And you can't really say there is anything. But Heyman thinks that this guy is going to be such a big star. You can literally put so many other guys into that spot and get a similar result, and that is part of the problem. There are so many interchangeable parts, interchangeable pieces, too many guys look the same, they act the same, they talk the same, they walk the same, they work the same, that nobody stands out, nobody's unique, and it's one big cluster fuckery of let's do more serious bumps that could actually really hurt us to make less money, whereas guys back in the day actually knew what the fuck they were doing when they had a chance to actually be stars and be larger life personalities and characters pretended to hurt each other and made more money. And wrestling, let's get it twisted here, at the end of the day is a business about making money. It's not about sitting there and putting on five-star matches no matter how many you fucking circle jerk to Dave Meltzer's dumbass. It is about money, who draws the most, who makes the most, period. Now, what the hell makes you think now, in 2019, that Paul Heyman being in charge of Raw and Eric Bischoff producing SmackDown is going to amount to two hella beans of positive change for this damn company? Imagination? Fantasy? Falsehoods of beliefs? I don't get it. I do kind of get it, though. I take that back. It's gotten so bad. And people are so desperate for positive change that they're willing to latch onto anything and hope it's going to deliver them better days ahead. Well, you better latch on real fucking good. Because you ain't guaranteed of shit changing 
And in fact, in six months or a year, you could be looking back and saying, not only did it not change for the better, it didn't change at all, or it changed for the worse. Have you considered that possibility? And that's why you need me, the Schleg Daddy, the angry wrestling man. Because damn it all here at Oterra Central, fuck what everybody else is talking about. I'll fuck all the kiss ass and fuck all the sucking up. Fuck all the delusional bias and bullshit. This is not the wrestling show you want, but by God, more than ever, just the wrestling show you need.